I would like to introduce you to a very, very big GPU. <laughs> Named after David Blackwell, a mathematician, game theorist, probability. We thought it was a perfect, per, per, perfect name. Blackwell, ladies and gentlemen, 208 billion transistors. And so, so you could see, you, it, it, I can see, there, there's a small line between two dies. This is the first time two dies have abutted like this together in such a way that the two, chip, the two dies think it's one chip. There's 10 terabytes of data between it, 10 terabytes per second. So that these two, these two sides of the Blackwell chip have no clue which side they're on. There's no memory locality issues, no cache issues. It's just one giant chip. And so 8,000 GPUs, 15 megawatts. If you were to use Blackwell to do this, it would only take 2,000 GPUs. 2,000 GPUs, same 90 days. But this is the amazing part. Only four megawatts of power. So from 15, yeah, that's right. And that's, and that's our goal. Our goal is to continuously drive down the cost and the energy. They're directly proportional to each other. Cost and energy associated with the computing so that we can continue to expand and scale up the computation that we have to do to train the next generation models. Everything in our company has a digital twin. And in fact, this digital twin idea is, is really spreading. And it, it, helps, it helps companies build very complicated things perfectly the first time. And what could be more exciting than creating a digital twin to build a computer that was built in a digital twin? And so let me show you what Wistron is doing. Wistron, one of our leading manufacturing partners, is building digital twins of NVIDIA DGX and HGX factories using custom software developed with Omniverse SDKs and APIs. For their newest factory, Wistron started with a digital twin to virtually integrate their multi-CAD and process simulation data into a unified view. During construction, the Omniverse digital twin was used to verify that the physical build matched the digital plans. Identifying any discrepancies early has helped avoid costly change orders. And the results have been impressive. Using a digital twin helped bring Wistron's factory online in half the time, just two and a half months instead of five. NVIDIA's Cordif is a revolutionary new generative AI model trained on high-resolution, radar-assimilated wharf weather forecasts and Era 5 reanalysis data. Using Cordif, extreme events like Chanthu can be super-resolved from 25km to 2km resolution with 1,000 times the speed and 3,000 times the energy efficiency of conventional weather models. By combining the speed and accuracy of NVIDIA's weather forecasting model ForecastNet and generative AI models like Cordif, we can explore hundreds or even thousands of kilometer scale regional weather forecasts to provide a clear picture of the best, worst, and most likely impacts of a storm. This wealth of information can help minimize loss of life and property damage. How would you do the optimization for each and every one of these models and put together the computing stack necessary to run that supercomputer so that you can run these models in your company? And so we have a great idea. We're going to invent a new way, a, invent a new way for you to receive and operate software. This software comes basically in a digital box. We call it a container. And we call it the NVIDIA Inference Microservice, a NIM. And I'll only explain to you what it is. It is packaged up with all of its dependencies. So CUDA, the right version. QDNN, the right version, Tensor RT, LLM, distributing across the multiple GPUs, Trident Inference Server, all completely packaged together. It's optimized depending on whether you have a single GPU, multi-GPU, or multi-node of GPUs. It's optimized for that. And it's connected up with APIs that are simple to use. How do we build software in the future? It is unlikely that you'll write it from scratch or write a whole bunch of Python code or anything like that. It is very likely that you assemble a team of AIs. There's probably going to be 
a super AI that you use that takes the mission that you give it and breaks it down into an execution plan. Some of that execution plan could be handed off to another NIM. That NIM would maybe uh, understand SAP. The language of SAP is ABAP. It might understand ServiceNow. And it go retrieve some information from their platforms. This incredibly advanced new SDK, we call it Isaac Perceptor. Isaac Perceptor, most, most of the robots today are pre-programmed. They're either following rails on the ground, digital rails, or they'd be following April tags. But in the future, they're going to have perception. And the reason why you want that is so that you could easily program it. You say, oh, would you like to go from point A to point B? And it will figure out a way to navigate its way there. So by only programming waypoints, the entire route could be adaptive. The entire environment could be reprogrammed, just as I showed you at the very beginning with the warehouse. You can't do that with pre-programmed AGVs. If those boxes fall down, they just all gum up and they just wait there for somebody to come clear it. And so now, with the Isaac Perceptor, we have incredible state-of-the-art vision odometry, 3D reconstruction, and in addition to 3D reconstruction, depth perception. The reason for that is so that you can have two modalities to keep an eye on what's happening in the world. Isaac Perceptor. The most used robot today is the manipulator. The next generation of robotics will likely be a humanoid robotics. We now have the necessary technology, and as I was describing earlier, the necessary technology to imagine generalized human robotics. In a way, human robotics is likely easier, and the reason for that is because we have a lot more imitation training data that we can provide the robots because we are constructed in a very similar way. It is very likely that the human robotics will be much more useful in our world because we created the world to be something that we can interoperate in and work well in. About the same size. The soul of NVIDIA, the intersection of computer graphics, physics, artificial intelligence. It all came to bear at this moment. The name of that project, General Robotics 003. I know, super good. Hey guys. So I understand you guys are powered by Jetson. They're powered by Jetsons. Little Jetson robotics computers inside. They learn to walk in Isaac Sim. Ladies and gentlemen, this, this is orange, and this is the famous green. They are the BDX robots of Disney. Amazing Disney research. Come on, you guys, let's wrap up. Let's go. I sit right here. Don't be afraid. Come here, green. Hurry up. These systems all need one thing. They need a platform, a digital platform, a digital twin platform, and we call that Omniverse, the operating system of the robotics world.